Hi everyone, Boomer here, and welcome to my latest play, or at least one that's been delayed a bit for my adventure game run. This is Simon the Sorcerer, and I'll let the intro speak for itself. <laughs> For my first trick, pulling the dog out of the hat. Thank you, Chippy. Now for some credits. Impressed, eh? Well, watch this. Try that again. The wand never fails. I'm getting the idea, and now for my next trick. Ah! Oh well, back to the old drawing board. Pretty good, huh? I'm entirely self taught, you know. I can't believe you've watched this far. Skip through it by now. I can smell burning. Hang on. Ow! Ow! Ooh. Ow! Ooh. Ruff, ruff, ruff. I'd like to see you do better. I wonder if I can find a better dog in here. Ow! I didn't even have time to get a phone number. Now, for all you traditionalists... <laughs> knocks them dead every time. Now for the woman again. I like a woman with spirit. And there's your intro to our protagonist. You'll get used to Simon, believe me. And you might recognise the voice actor. Uh, we will definitely come across who the voice actor is very shortly. But this is a fairly long intro. You did notice the early 90s jiggle physics going on there when the woman popped out of the hat. This Not homework you. is really bugging me. I think I'll find the dog and put it in the dryer again. So that's where you are. What's this? Ye oldie spell bookie. What a load of old rubbish. Well, of course the first thing you do after seeing a portal open is you're gonna walk straight through it. I'm pretty sure I don't know any dog that would do that. But hey, that's the idea. Okay, gobos. This magic paper bring food. I thought I heard something. Alizingi, Alizangi, Alizongi, Alizongi. Dear Simon, I am pleased to announce that you have been chosen from literally hundreds of hopeful candidates to perform a death-defying but extremely worthwhile quest, for which you will be rewarded quite a lot. 
All you have to do is rescue me from the hands of the evil sorcerer Sordid. Feel free to use my extremely valuable spellbook and dog to assist you. Look forward to seeing you soon. Wish you were here. Love and kisses. Calypso, Grand High Wizard of the Village of Fleur de Lis. P.S. Before you can use the spellbook, you must become a wizard. There are some wizards hanging around in the local tavern who can help you. P.P.S. Use this magic postcard and map to help you. Oh, great! I'm stuck here in this stinking world in these stinking clothes and not a pizza bar in sight! Lucky this is just a dream or I'd be really worried. Breaking through the uh, fourth wall already, are we, Simon? So, to give this a full introduction, welcome to Simon the Sorcerer, produced by AdventureSoft Publishing Limited. I am playing the 1998 CD version, which is downloadable from goodoldgames.com. However, the game was originally released, I believe, in 93, if I'm being accurate. It was released in either 92 or 93 on the floppy disk and did not have the uh, talking uh, voices. Uh, which is probably why the music and the voices aren't quite perfectly aligned at the moment. Uh, it's your bog standard early 90s point and click adventure game, except that it's set pretty much entirely in English humour, so you guys might not, might appreciate it, might not, I don't know, as Simon puts on his Walkman, so that tells us what sort of period we're living in here. Uh, just so you guys might have recognised Simon's voice actor, it is Chris Barry, who is famous for Red Dwarf's Rimmer, British Empire being Lara Croft's butler, I think, in Tomb Raider, and various other, uh, you know, a multitude of other uh, roles that he has played. And, yeah, he's a pretty big, uh, pretty big actor, really, to get as the main character on your video game. Uh, to give an introduction to Simon, this is taken directly from the uh, taken directly from the manual. Uh, we will say that once upon a time, it all started on the day of Simon's twelfth birthday. So there will be some puerile humour in this game. It was having a party, not a modern rave party that twelve-year-olds have, but a quiet English affair with jelly, ice cream, pin the tail on the grandma, and a magician called Marvelo. He specialised in pulling rabbits out of hats, making seemingly endless quantities of brightly coloured handkerchiefs appear from his mouth. Simon took great pleasure in pointing out how these tricks were done to his awestruck friends, and eventually had to be physically restrained by his father to prevent Marvelo the magician becoming Marvelo the murderer. When blowing out the candles time came, Simon wished for a Game Boy from his grandparents and for his older brother to fall down something deep and preferably spiky. He was surprised when later the doorbell rang and upon opening the door he discovered a small scruffy looking dog wrapped in shiny paper. After unsuccessfully trying to install his friend's Tetris cart, he was persuaded that it was not a new Game Boy after all. The dog he called Chippy had a strange book in its mouth that no one could read. His parents hadn't the heart to tell the young boy the dog wasn't for him and that they had no idea what, from where or whom it came. It was after all the target for the boyish sadism found in all youngsters. The family adopted the dog and the book was dumped in the loft and forgotten until now. And that was the spell book that uh, Chippy found and led to opening this portal. And we've just found out in the intro there that Chippy is in fact Calypso's dog, who has been kidnapped by an evil sorcerer called Sordid. Now, before we get any deeper into this game, I will uh, let you guys know Simon the Sorcerer has multiple different uh, sequels to it as well. Uh, I will be playing this one and Simon the Sorcerer 2, which I believe is the strongest um, strongest installment in the series. Simon the Sorcerer 1 is good, but I think 2 is stronger. Uh, however, they're both very good. 3 and 4, I think, kind of um, missed the boat a little bit. 3 certainly did, and 4 and 5 weren't made by the same people. Anyway, before I bore you much further, we are already 10 minutes in. It's time to get into the game. We have down here is your standard array of moves. We also have the map, which allows us to move anywhere on the map, a postcard, and Calypso's note, which tells us, uh, which is basically what we just read out. 
So what we're going to do here, there are a couple of things in the room. In Simon the Sorcerer 2, they introduced a function key which would flash uh, anywhere on the screen to show you what um, to show you things that were on the screen. Uh, which we're interactable with. Simon 1 doesn't have that, but we can have a look around still. Put away the Walkman, Simon. A strange picture with strange symbols around it. Thanks, Simon. It's my little dog, Chippy. Okay, and we can pick up a few things here. And uh, Simon has the same... Uh, the same issues that um, pretty much all adventure characters have in this time. He has a... Oh, look! There's a pair of scissors in here. He has a uh, hat that can store pretty much anything. Although the rules on what Simon can store in his hat are never quite really... Um, they're never quite spelled out. Uh, because there are some things he can fit in and other things he can't. Anyway... You'll note here, if I uh, come over, let's see if I can get in the fridge, I'm hungry. The door appears to be stuck shut. Well, that didn't work, does it? So, let's get moving. So, let's head this way, I think. Ooh, Blacksmith, he's a uh, impressive dude. Very muscular. Can I talk to him? Good morning. He's too engrossed in his work to hear me. Oh, well. There are a couple of things you can pick up here. We've got a piece of rope, and that's always useful, right? No one will miss this old thing. It's the usual form of... You might miss that if you didn't see it. There's a clapper on this desk, and you will need that. Large, wooden, and completely locked. Okay, I guess I won't be going in there. But... And we can head this way. <laughs> See, when you put a mouse, or, mouse pointer over someone, it says dodgy geezer. There's kind of sayings what he's going to be. Uh... I'm going to head away from him. I don't really want to talk to a dodgy geezer at this point. And this is kind of what I was thinking. I uh, I want this wagon wheel. It looks useful. It's too big for me. Okay, then. Well, what about this ladder? Can I get that? I can fit this ladder in my hat and I can't fit a wagon wheel in it. What the hell's that, anyway? Ugh. But it looks like we can head into this house, so we're going to have a wander inside. There are suspicious herbs here. They look just like the ones my brother grows. <laughs> Is a moose head? It's a papier mache moose head. You know, I never... Can I have the moose It's head? too big for me. It's too big, you can stick a ladder in it, huh? I can't reach them. Okay, fair enough. Is there anything in here we can get? Oh, there's a cold remedy there, so let's get that. Basically, if it isn't... the standard, It's the standard sort of uh, adventure game thing. If it isn't nailed down, pick it up. I've already got it. Let's have a look. It's super-powered elephant cold remedy. Elephant cold remedy, huh? Oh, uh, did I forget something else while he was in there? Hmm, anything else? Ah! I did seem, I seem to remember when I was uh, playing this before, there was something else you got from here, but, uh, it's kind of coming back to me as I play through the game, so... You know, I can imagine myself going in and out of a few uh, few things, but again, we're just basically taking anything that's not nailed down here. Uh, I don't think... 
What, what if I go this way? Where do I end up? Uh, I don't think I can... This must be an extremely low-budget candy house. <laughs> can I go in? It's locked. You managed to lock a door made of chocolate. Really? Okay. Let's head this way, I guess. And let's go and see if we can talk to... Let's head back past here. Cool, the dodgy geezer ignored us. Uh, a lot of the time, the uh, he goes psst at you or like, you know, just tries to get your attention. So, uh, the fact he didn't get my attention, that's pretty good. Actually, I'm going to go back and talk to him. I want to have a bit of a chat with the dodgy geezer. Psst. There we go. Did you say psst? Who, me? Yes. What do you want? You interested in any crisis, antique porcelain figurines? Not really. They're handcrafted by the ancient ones of Grohl. No thanks. I've got lots of other priceless antiques. Anyone for a gold piece? How come you can sell priceless antiques for so little? It's the recession. I've got lots of one-off bargains. So recessions happen even in Magic Land. Have you got any hint books for this game? Sorry, sold the last one five minutes ago. I've got lots of other stuff though. Sorry, I'm really not interested. Who needs your custom anyway? Uh, you will later, but at the moment there's nothing we can buy off him because we don't have any gold, so there's no point really talking to him. And he doesn't have any hint books for this game anyway, so that's a little bit unfortunate. Simon is definitely a wise ass, and you will get used to his. Uh, you'll get used to it at some point in the game. But since we're twelve, we're going to walk right into a pub, and there's some matches there, so let's pick them up. Uh, pixel hunting. I wonder what this is doing here. Can I use it? I haven't got any quarters. Quarters? You're speaking with a British accent and you're saying quarters. Hmm. Well, of course, uh, there's nothing like taking advantage of a sleeping dwarf. I want a beard. So one thing every 12-year-old at this point in history wanted was a beard. They must be the sharpest scissor I've ever seen. That's ridiculous. But if you ever want information anywhere, you need to talk to a bartender. Good morrow, barkeep. Good morrow, lad. Cracking accent, gotta say. Incidentally, it's a fine establishment you have here. I'm very proud of the drunken druid. It's my pride and joy. People come from the whole village to raise a jar in here. I've got a reputation of fine service and even finer ales. Business is especially good at the moment, though, because of some guy called Sordid. Huh. How is Sordid helping to boost business? It's a long story. Apparently, he wants to take over the entire world using black magic. Anyway, as a result, all the heroes are donning rusty armor again and coming back into service. All of them seeing themselves as the saviors of the world. The thing is, though, they all stop here for a drink on the way. I've seen all sorts go through here. Warriors, wizards, priests, assassins, and not one has been seen again. So what? I don't see what all the fuss is about, personally. So he may be a bit power crazy and all that, but who isn't these days? Old fella keeps himself to himself. He don't bother us, we don't bother him, and that's that. <laughs> Your standard, stand aside and let the bad guy do what he wants to do. You talk a lot. <laughs> I come from another dimension. As I said, we get all sorts in here. That's just a proper no-sell, isn't it? Absolute no-sell. You talk a lot, don't you? 
I'm a bartender. The punters expect local gossip and general small talk from me. I quite fancy a drink now. Make mine a wet wizard. Hang on a moment. So he's going to serve a miner as well, but this is something that you need to look out I'm for. I'm sure I've got some sparrow juice down here You somewhere. can notice that you're actually active here, so you can do Where things while the bartender's distracted. What's that stupid man done with it? I'm sorry, sir, I can't seem to find any sparrow juice at the moment. That's okay. I'm underage anyway. Anything else, sir? Nice talking to you. So long. See ya. Now, of course, what I'm going to do here is do what any 12-year-old would try and do and chat up some nubile Valkyries. Hello. What do you want, boy? I do apologise for the voices being very low, but there's really nothing I can do about that. There's no sound levels in the game. Uh. What do you do when the sun goes down, babe? What are you on, kiddo? Get out of here. Uh, well, God loves a trier. Hi, I'm doing a survey for Warrior Weekly. Would you care to take part? Okay, man. Do you know anything about the evil wizard Sordid? That's why we're here, actually. We've journeyed from the far northern steppes to battle with him. Through the perilous wastelands of Kring, pausing only to defeat the evil tribe of Wedgie the Merciless across the plains of death and the fields of doom where we liberated the city of Tormer from the dark hordes of Kalish we're now preparing to attack the sorcerer's tower and save the world again Wedgie the Unmerciful huh what are your measurements I'm a 38 that they're as forefront as possible with those. But that's your standard fantasy measurements, I think, right? What are your hobbies? I like killing things, drinking a lot, and I like needlework and decorative embroidery. And killing things and drinking a lot. Well, she had to recover it there, right? You're not married, are you? Core in this part of the uh, multiverse, obviously. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Goblin flakes and orc eyes, sunny side up. So, how many heroic deeds have you done then? We're second in the Barbarian Tag Team, First Division. And still in the running for the Dismembered Orc Trophy. That's some trophy. Do you dye your hair? I use orc's blood to do mine. And I use troll brains. Doesn't seem like that really like help the health of your hair but you never know what are your ambitions in life yesterday we pledged to rid the land of orcs but we decided it was too easy so today our ambition is to kill sordid you'll be lucky where'd you get your armor battle dwarf forge in northgate we've never been disappointed no more questions ladies see ya you better give us a good review or else phew it's awfully hot in here well, tried and failed. Let's head into the back room where we're hoping to try and find some wizards. Where did this game come from anyway? That short man with the strange eyes gave it to us, remember? No, we didn't have to pay for it. The nice man, though, as I recall. Very clever with his, uh, wok, wasn't he? That thing looked really 
make sure I wouldn't dare mess with it. I wanted to meet his confused friend he was always on about. He wasn't confused if they think they're disguised as yokels. Judging by some of the things he is supposed to have said, he sounded pretty confused. I had a friend who was a confused one. Never, never saw him again. Let's have another go at this game then. Excuse me. Yes, boy. What's this game you're playing? We be crop rotating, bain't we? Who are? That we be. And we bain't be being wizards, bain't we? No, like, we be being farmers. We be less magical than an organic parsnip, like. Organic food was around even then. Well, I think it's time to hit this guy, these guys with the truth, unfortunately. You have absolutely feeble accents, fellas. Are you saying we be fakes, like? Yep. What makes you think we're a wizard anyway, like? And now time to break the fourth wall as well. When I move my mouse pointer over you, it says wizards. Oh, fair enough, I suppose. Disguise is off, lads. What did you want to speak to us about anyway? Being a wizard. Do you know anything about this sordid geezer? We will not impart such information to you, a non-wizard. Stop wasting our time. Well, I guess we'd better so say I, I want to be a wizard. Listen to me for a second. Yes, boy? I want to be a wizard. You can't be a wizard. You're not old enough. Not old enough. Where did you say we were? We're in a quaint room. There's always a way. Listen to me for a second. There's yes, always boy? a way. And so I'll do anything to be a wizard. I'll do anything to be a wizard. Anything? Anything. Well, you could do us a little favour. You see, all new wizards must perform a service to the circle before being um, properly invested. Isn't that right, brothers? Mm, yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Hey? Just name it and I'll do it. It's like this, see? We would be extremely interested in acquiring a certain magical implement. It's a magical staff rumoured to be hidden in this area. And we would like you to find it for us. What does this staff look like? It's about six feet tall with a crystal sphere on one end. That sounds like pretty much any wizardry staff. Any ideas where it is? As far as we know, its last owner was Naplin, the necromancer. What he did with it when he died is beyond me. Tricky type, those necromancers. Always messing about with embalming fluid and giblets. Well, there's a uh, disturbing thought. And then I get made a wizard, right? If you find us the staff, they will invest you on the spot. No problem. We look forward to your return. <laughs> or lack of it, right. probably. Have we twitted the sparrows yet? Mm. So, we have our quest, and that is to get a magical staff for these four wizards in order to become a wizard and use Calypso's spellbook. Which we can't currently use because we are not a wizard. So we are going to head... Let's head east. See what's here. No, we're back at the Barbarians, so... Let's head away. I think this takes us back towards the Dodgy Geezer. Oh, we haven't been this way yet. That's where we need to go. Yeah, you're right. And we have now walked out into the forest. We've left Fleur de Lis and we're heading into the forest. And that is where we are going to pick this up next time. So, thank you very much for watching, guys. This is Boomer, and I will see you next time.